there are two Nintendo consoles that share many of the same attributes. They both have screens, play games in high definition, and even share many of the same games. One of them seems like a prototype, an idea that wasn't thought out to completion. The other looks like the final version of that prototype, the finished idea. These two systems are eternally bound to be compared to each other. 2012 marked a new era for Nintendo. It's the year they finally got with the times. All our favorite gaming characters were about to be rendered in clarity we had yet to see from them. All it took was one small addition. They finally added an HDMI port to their home console. This small port was the sole reason I decided to buy a Wii U. This is the biggest win for the console. But it also does a lot of other things right. First off, the design is great. I've heard people complain about how boring it is, but come on, this thing looks like it belongs in the living room. It can stand up vertically with these special stands that came with the deluxe black version. They could also be purchased separately if you had the standard white Wii U. Or you could lay it down on its side, which also looks and performs great. But this is only one part of the console. The other half is a little more divisive. The gamepad is necessary to start up the machine. It's big, bulky, and even a little bulbous. It looks clunky and out of place in our small bezeled modern tech world of today. It looked out of date even in 2012. But it's super comfortable. I've put in hours of gameplay on this, and I've never once had an issue with it feeling uncomfortable. This ridge right here fits so well in your hands. The grips also add comfort for long play sessions. It blows the Wiimote out of the water when it comes to comfortability. I welcome the traditional controller layout over the unconventional layout of the past Nintendo console. Right in the center of all the buttons and sticks is the touchscreen. The screen has a resolution of 480p. This is shocking because games look fantastic on it. I thought for sure it was at least 720, but nope, it's 480. The touchscreen is very similar to the touchscreens found on the lower DS and 3DS handhelds. It's super handy in the few games that use it, specifically in the Legend of Zelda remakes. I love having my world map always on the lower screen. It's similar to how the aforementioned DS and 3DS use it, but that's not the only trick the gamepad has. Nintendo created it to be utilized with off-TV gameplay, meaning if somebody wanted to watch TV and you wanted to play a game or you were in the middle of a game, you could play that on the gamepad. I use this quite often, though I think people were confused by this. I believe their perception was that you could just take the gamepad with you as if it were a handheld. In reality, you had to be fairly close to the console for this to actually work. The major thing that missed the mark for the gamepad was the battery. The battery doesn't last long at all. I played most of my games with it constantly plugged into the wall. It wasn't a big deal for me, but I've heard many people complain about it. The gamepad is a huge controller, and it's required to play the Wii U. Nintendo released the Pro Controller, but you still needed the gamepad to start the machine. On a side note, the battery in the Pro Controller is awesome, it lasts forever, I've hardly ever plugged it into charge. One of the biggest aspects of the Wii U is the Virtual Console. First introduced with the Wii, the Virtual Console is amazing. You can download and play classic games and play them whenever you want. It's so great having access to NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy Advance, and DS games. You can also download TurboGrafx games. It's awesome playing those handheld games on the TV. Sure, we could do that with Game Boy Advance games on the Game Boy Player for the GameCube, but it's nice having it available on a download service. Also, they look great. The Wii U is also backwards compatible with the original Wii. Backwards compatibility is so important. It instantly gives you an entire library of games you can play on the new console. The best part to having Wii games playable on the Wii U is the choice to output them over composite or HDMI. Playing them over HDMI is fantastic. These games have so much more to offer than the picture you get from the included composite cables. The Wii U instantly made the Wii obsolete for me. It's the best way to play Wii games. But the Wii U had some problems. There are reasons why people don't even know what the Wii U is. 
Not even people who work in game stores know what it is. I experienced this firsthand last year. Someone asked what the difference between the Wii U and the Wii was. The salesperson replied, I think the Wii U is just an upgraded Wii. Though not completely wrong, they were completely wrong. It's not just an upgraded Wii. It's a new console that's capable of playing Wii games in the best possible way. The marketing for the Wii U was very poor. It was confusing from the get-go. The name wasn't and still isn't good. What does the U stand for? Does it stand for university, like Wii University? Does it mean you, as in me and you play the Wii U? It's so aggravating because it's so close to the number two, which, let's be honest, is what they were going for. This is the Wii 2. If they would have just named it the Wii 2, there would have been no confusion as to if this was a new console or if the gamepad was just an add-on for the Wii, which was a question people had. If you didn't follow gaming news, you probably had no idea this was a whole separate console from the Wii. They look similar and have almost the exact same name. Remember, the Wii was aimed at the casual crowd. They weren't following the newest gaming trends. I can see why Nintendo named it after the Wii. It was a massive success, but that name betrayed them in retail sales. Again, I say, if it had a two at the end of the name, I think it would have helped out big time. But let's not forget the gamepad. People, specifically gamers, really don't like this thing. Because it's big and doesn't look like an Xbox or PlayStation controller, it's automatically bad. I remember hearing that about the GameCube controllers as well. But that controller ended up being one of the best ever made. In fact, Nintendo's still making that controller. In all honesty, I like the Wii U gamepad. The button layout feels natural and the buttons have a great tactile feel to them. But it was confusing. Was it just an accessory for the original Wii? Can you really just take the gamepad with you and play all the games on it? These aren't really questions a company wants to hear about their current console. The Wii U was a failure for Nintendo. It's unfortunate because many people, the ones who gave it a chance, loved it. The games it has are some of the best games ever made. The contrast between the high peak the Wii soared to, then the steep rapid descent to the bottom the Wii U maneuvered is one of the most dramatic I've seen. But it wasn't all for naught. The Wii U's DNA lives on. Without it, one of the best consoles to date would have never been conceived. Nintendo put their head down, put that failure behind them, and announced that a new console would be released. That console became the massively successful and beloved Nintendo Switch. This is the most unique and versatile console ever made. It is what the Wii U should have been. It is a home console and a handheld gaming system, all in one. It also comes with two built-in controllers. It's sleek, modern, and has a very small footprint. Like the Wii U, the Switch outputs in high definition, but not from the console itself. The dock unlocks the power within. Slip the console into the dock and the gameplay displays on the TV. You can detach the Joy-Cons and use them as traditional controllers or use only one of them. My choice, however, is the Pro Controller. This is one of the finest controllers made. The D-pad is there, but everything else is placed ever so perfectly. As you can tell, unlike the Wii U, you aren't tethered to just a single controller to activate the console. This is huge. The flexibility of the Switch is unmatched. Also, unlike the Wii U, you can take the console out of the dock and take it with you, and play your games on it as a handheld. A fantastic handheld. This is a great portable system. The landscape form factor is the way I prefer to play portable games. Not that past consoles like the Game Boy family of systems were uncomfortable, but this is my preferred way. Not having to balance a top heavy screen and focus on button presses at the same time is very appreciated. I love the cartridge based games as well. Look how small they are. It's so easy to pack these around. To think that Breath of the Wild is in this tiny cartridge is amazing. Look at the size difference between these two. And yes, this game was always meant to be a Wii U game, so this is the form factor it was always meant to be in. Playing these gigantic games on the go is heaven sent. As a person who travels often for work, having a handheld like this is a must for long flights and hours spent waiting for those flights. I can absorb myself in a game during this time, put the system to sleep, then continue the adventure when I get home. It has changed gaming for me. Up until the Switch, I've always had to buy the portable counterpart to the current Nintendo console. This meant that I would always play more portable games than home console games. I would often miss out on large releases because I just didn't have the time to play them. 
most of my gaming time was spent on portable games. Not that those games are bad, in fact I really enjoy those games, but now I get a chance to play those large home console releases. I don't have to split my budget on home console games and portable games. I don't care that those games aren't rendered in the highest resolution, I still get the chance to play them anywhere I go. But the Switch isn't perfect. Where is the Virtual Console? Why isn't it on this platform? It was so successful on the Wii. Some people bought a Wii just for the Virtual Console. It was so great having access to those games. Having to buy physical cartridges for those games adds up. With the Wii and Wii U, those games were available for $5 to $10. The replacement to the Virtual Console came out a year and a half after the launch of the Switch. A small collection of NES and SNES games were released under a gated subscription service, meaning you have to pay for access to this small collection. It's great that I can play all of them for a small price, but those games aren't mine. I don't care for more than half of them, but at least I can play them if I ever get a hankering for it. That's the best part of the Virtual Console. I can pick and choose which games I pay for. I can also play those games whenever and wherever I want especially the virtual console games I paid for on the 3DS. I don't care for the new classic game model. We don't know when new games will be released, or if we'll ever get new games. You're better off buying the classic edition consoles. You'll get a fantastic collection of games that you can play whenever for a one-time price. The Switch's success can be attributed to the Wii U. Everything the Wii U did wrong was fixed and then formed into the Switch. Instead of having a console and a gamepad, it was rolled into one piece. The gamepad is the console. It's also slimmer and sleeker. Even Wii U games were ported over to the Switch. Some don't even know that these were once Wii U games. Games I've been playing for over half a decade have been packaged as new games. And guess what? They've been wildly successful. The success of these games on the Switch says that the Wii U had a perception issue. It's a shame too. If these games were successful on the Wii U, we probably could have had new entries of these franchises on the Switch. However, for most people, these are new releases, which explains how successful they've been. The Wii U and the Switch are very similar to each other. Both have a small screen and output in HD. Those screens are utilized in different ways. One you can play at home only, and the other you can take with you and play wherever you want. One is ultra sleek while the other is an outdated hunk of plastic. The Wii U set the foundation from which the Switch was built. There are two Nintendo consoles that share many of the same attributes. One of them seems like a prototype, an idea that wasn't thought out to full completion. The other looks like the final version of that prototype, the finished idea. These two systems are eternally bound to be compared to each other. The Switch is what the Wii U should have been.